Hey guys, hi. Uh, welcome to your travel postcard. I'm making this video in English uh, because I've made one in Hindi for a lot of my uh, Indian folk. So here's one in English. Um, this is a quick tour of our RV uh, that we uh, that we had got to uh, spend some time in. Um, and this is an E350 Super Duty chassis and it's a Winnebago. Uh, great RV and I'm gonna give you a quick tour inside and outside the RV. So here you go, inside the RV. Uh, walk in, you got the driver's cab, a very comfortable seat, uh, very good uh, setup. I think you gotta get used to it a little bit, but once you do, it's re really good and really easy. Um, passenger side, navigator, whatever you wanna call. Um, then you have you have a bunk bed right on top as, a, as soon as you enter onto your right. Here it's good for one adult or maybe like two or three kids. Do not have any kids or anybody over here, especially when you're driving, because if you brake hard, they're gonna fall out. Uh, there's a TV here as well that's connected to some uh, wipe, uh, some you know, dish TV I think, but it's got a Blu-ray player. Nobody really uses a TV anymore, to be honest. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why would you? I mean, you got an iPad and an iPhone and all that, so you should just do that. <laughs> that's my opinion. Um, you got uh, you got extra space to extra windows to look outside and a vent, uh, AC AC exhaust. So look, turning inside the RV, uh, there's a. There's storage space, but let me let me give you a wider look of what the RV looks like once you enter it. It's uh, the kitchen, dining. That's the bedroom. This is the uh, this is the sofa, the couch. You can hang out here, and some extra storage space, uh, sleeping space. But this sofa is a recliner, so you can make it into a flat bed. Uh, good for kids. I don't know if probably a short adult could sleep on it. I don't really think an adult, um, and a, a, you know, a six foot per tall person obviously cannot fit on this. Um, let's let's look at the kitchen. The kitchen is a fully functional kitchen in my view. Uh, has a good sink, running water. Um, it has plenty of storage space. Some one ten uh, watt, uh, a one ten volt, um, uh, and I think this can take up to fifteen hundred watts if you have a generator on. Um, and then a gas stove, uh, right? Uh, there's a gas tank below the RV. Uh, that fills up about 40 gallons of gas. I mean, that's plenty of gas for everything. There's a microwave oven as well, and this is the control panel, control plane. I'll go over the control plane real quick. Microwave, uh, sorry, this is an oven. Uh, sorry, not an oven. This is a microwave. Oh my gosh. There's a microwave. Uh, runs on when your generator is on or when your engine's on, I think. But uh, but but most, some of the RVs also come with the uh, oven, right? And this one does not, which is fine. I mean, unless you're like baking uh, or big into baking when you're on the road. Um, this dining table converts into a flat bed as well. You just have it's pretty easy. You just pull it out. You just lay it down and then convert these uh, pillows into like a flat bed. Again, I don't know if an adult would fit on that unless you know squish your legs up. But uh, or you know it's mostly for kids in in my view. Uh, those curtains go up and you can look outside. It's pretty nice. Uh, pretty nice driving that way. Uh, fully functional fridge. I think it's a pretty good size fridge i mean it's got plenty of storage space and there's a fully functional freezer this is really good because in case you don't have to stop for ice or anything um this is the thermostat for the cool heat um, and the air this works only when the generator is on and i'll show you how to turn that on but the generator provides enough electricity for the ac to kick on because the acs are going to be a lot of uh, power uh, usage uh, this is really good because this allows you to hook up your car safety like a child seat that's mandatory in the us right uh, without a child seat you cannot be driving around even if it's an rv i would highly recommend if you have toddlers and little kids they should be in a car seat inside the rv as well and it's very easy to hook up piece of cake um, this RV has uh, six people seating capacity, so there's a capacity, sleeping capacity is also six. The way they judge that is any seat that has seat belts is one person, right? This has seat belts, it's hidden behind that. This has seat belt, the couch has seat belts, so all of that seat belts are like six people. So that's what. Now, can you technically stuff more people in? Yeah, I mean, you can. I mean, the RV has plenty of room. Let's look at the bedroom real quick. This is the bedroom. Uh, I think two two grown adults, maybe two little kids. Uh, plenty of space here. Um, uh, I gave some feedback to put curtains here. I think it would be nice if it gets darkened and even here a curtain that would be nice. That's not there today, but hopefully they'll put that in. Uh, storage space over there as well. Plenty of storage space. Plenty of storage space in here as well uh, for the RV. Now here is the bathroom, the restroom. I know everybody's probably curious about it, so let's look at it. Uh, you got, let's start with the exhaust, right? <laughs> so just because it's closed and small, doesn't mean it can't vent out. So you just 
twist this open and then you turn on the little switch and this fan kicks on so that's good uh, for the air fresh air to kind of go out uh, come in and you know the, you know if you want any exhaust to go out um, sink well hot water cold water you know and there's lots of storage space over here and in there toilet very straightforward once you use your toilet you flush it out and that's it and this is the shower I think a full uh, fully grown person could uh, could fit in here I think a good six I think a, easily a six foot person will fit in here or even a little taller uh, I think it's um, it's about I would say 36 uh, it's about three feet in length and uh, three feet in length and about two and a half or two feet in width so about 36 by 24 I would say if I can guess um, but but yeah pretty pretty straightforward stand-up shower some hooks to put on your couch let's look at the control panel real quick uh, so this is the control panel this is pretty important uh, so this RV has a pretty cool feature which uh, which is an inverter feature so basically this inverter when you have it on it runs the fridge so just just the fridge as far as I know and it uses batteries so if you're parked anywhere outside uh, for the fridge to run you don't have to run the generator so there's a separate generator for like I mentioned for the AC um, you need a generator um, so for the oven uh, for the microwave and things like that but if you don't want to keep running the generator which uses your petrol or gasoline uh, then you can just leave the inverter on and that powers the fridge and the batteries get recharged every time you start your engine or the or your generator now if you do want and you press this it turns off if you do want the generator all you do is you press this switch there you go the fridge is on the generator is running right now you can hear it this is the number of hours the generator is running for or, uh, so every time an hour passes it records it so that way you can keep a track of how long your generator has been running um, and to stop it you just press this so that's it the generator stopped in a cold start situation when the generator is not starting you just press this stop switch like a couple of times it squirts fuel into the generator and once that's done you can then kick start it now remember the generator uses the same gasoline in your fuel tanks but it uses so little like you could run it for like 10 hours straight and it'll probably use like two gallons tops I, in in my view like i ran it all night and the fuel tank was still in full position so like the indicator was full so barely use it um, the next thing to look at is the water pump. If the water pump is a pressure pump, so if it's turned off, then this is not going to work. You're not going to get any pressure. Look at that. So what you do is you turn this on, and you can leave it on if you want, and then you'll get non-stop continuous pressure. Okay. This is the water heater. You turn this on, and you get this DLS felt light, FLT light. That means it's going to like start heating up your water. There's limited hot water. Every time like it heats up, you have some water. Uh, about like 10 gallons maybe that you can use or six gallons that you can use to shower and use but once it's running out it's going to keep heating on the water so you can turn this off this is the these are the indicators right so battery indicator battery says it's full so that means i can always run my inverter uh, fresh water tank right now it shows half so that means i gotta fill it up it's a 40 gallon tank in this rv it's a winnebago uh, uh, outlook model black is black and gray are your uh, septic tanks so black is for your toilet and restroom uh, and gray is for your shower kitchen sink and uh, toilet sink so black right now shows three two-thirds is full actually it's empty I think there's a sensor problem on this RV so and I let the folks know but it's actually empty and then the gray is empty so that's how you keep checking it uh, very often and whenever these black and gray get full you have plenty of places you can stop by to dump it it's super easy and I'm gonna I'm gonna show that uh, show that to you in a bit so that's an inside tour of the RV again take it take a good good a nice good look uh, one of the things I want to show you is that this RV also has an awning so when you click on out this thing kind of comes out so that way I don't want to I don't want to pull it out right now but that way you have like a big awning outside then you can hang out with your family here uh, it also has awning lights this is a battery kill switch so you can what you can do is you close this and everything shuts off you, this is like the main fuse and these are the lights so turn off the lights um, going outside this is the uh, fresh water tank it's a 40 gallon tank remember if you fill this tank up completely it adds about two about um, you know 40 gallons is like uh, 40 gallons is like almost 150 yeah it's like 168 liters so it's 168 kilograms of weight so that's that means lesser gas mileage so you got to be cognizant of that a lot of storage space here this is extra power outlets cable again i don't know who watches cable but whoever does uh, this is just exhaust for your water heater 
Uh, on the other side, do not climb up this ladder because this is only for AC servicing. And then over here is like a lot of storage space for you, for your bags and everything. But it also has that equipment that you need to like drain. So this is where you have the drain exhaust, right? For your black water and then the gray water. So first, what you do is you hook this up to, with a pipe into your drainage system. Uh, it's uh, like in an RV park or wherever. Uh, and I'm gonna go over that at the end of the video with, and give you all the info. But you see this lever here? Once you hook that black, first thing you do, you hook it up, then you lock it in, and then you pull this lever so the black, black waste drains first. Let it be, once it drains, then you close this and you pull the gray lever, then when you pull that, then it will then flush it out with the gray waste, which is basically a water, right? I mean, it's all processed water, really. Once all of that is done, then you put it back in, you, you push all these uh, levers back in into position and that's it. Um, this is the fuel tank. Fuel is about 55 gallons. It gives you about eight, nine miles per gallon maybe, depending on how you drive. This is city fuel. So if you're parked in like an RV park, you can just connect it or into your house. You can just connect it to direct water line and it will just use that. Uh, I think this is some more storage space. This is where your gas, um, gas cylinders is. So this is for your cooking and the heat. Oh, I forgot to show you the heat inside. I'll show that. And this is for your generator. I don't want to open it, but here you see. So uh, pretty easy to drive uh, RV. I mean, you gotta be used to driving like, the, like a big truck like this. Uh, you'll definitely feel it when you get on the road. But man, this is like super comfortable. Uh, I forgot to show you the heater here. Let me turn on the light real quick. So this is the, this is the heater. So when you turn on the heater, you don't need the generator on. But when you turn on the heater, it heats using your gas outside, which is LPG gas, not your gasoline. So it uses that and heats up the RV. So, you know, it gets pretty hot uh, and then the thermostat really controls that. So it's actually a pretty good thing because you don't have to turn on the gas uh, generator all night. You can still heat the RV and your fridge is still working with the inverter. So kind of like self, you know, it's kind of complete isolation, right? You don't, you're not really depending on anybody at that point. So I made this video real fast because my battery is like literally dying. <laughs> So, so I had to really charge my battery real quick and I make this video, but hopefully you guys liked it. Um, yeah, you definitely have to definitely reach out to me and in comments below. So that way I can give you more information about, uh, about the, about the nice family that I got this RV from. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I'll also share some tips at the end of the video on where you can uh, do what, what not. And I mean, it's super easy. I'll probably end up buying one of these in about five years when the kids grow up a little bit. But, um, and also leave some, I'll also leave some toddler tips as, for example, if you're traveling with toddlers, it's going to be a little challenging because they, they want to always get out and run around. So, uh, uh, what do you got to do, uh, when, when that happens? But, um, all right guys, thanks a lot, but, uh, do like, and subscribe.